Hi, my name is Maggie, and I'm the librarian for UNCG's art history courses. Today, we're going to start out by looking at our library website, library.uncg.edu. The library is both a tool for researchers and the homepage for the library as a department in the university. Most of our tools for research are in this top section of the website, in and around this red box. If I want to, for example, find books or DVDs related to something I'm interested in, I can click on this catalog tab here in the red box to search through the library content that UNCG owns. This includes our books and DVDs. Because we have renewable subscriptions to articles and package deals through databases, if you instead want to search for an article from a magazine or an academic journal, you should instead click on databases. Some of our databases are multidisciplinary, like Academic Search Complete. This means you can research topics and find articles for just about any academic subject or discipline. However, many of our databases are subject specific. If you want to find the databases that are recommended for a specific subject you're studying, instead of choosing a database from the databases page, you can click on Research Guides by Subject here in the red box. Then you can select the subject you're studying from the list, like art. A research guide is a page made by a librarian that guides students to the resources they need to do research for a particular subject or course. After we click on art, we can select Art 112 Online from this left side menu, and, to, and we will get to our class research guide. On the class research guide, you can see a list of databases that are recommended for researching art history topics. However, because a lot of academic publishing on art history focuses on Western art, to research global art history topics, we often also need to consult resources that we can find on the internet. That's why being able to critically evaluate websites to make sure they are credible or trustworthy is so important. The Evaluating Web Sources tab on this research guide has useful questions you can ask yourself about the sources you find. Let's try a sample topic to research. Today, we're going to look for information about masks from Burkina Faso. You can see from our results, we have a lot of different types of websites that, we, that come up when we are trying to find information on this topic. One of the first things we see is a Wikipedia entry on the art of Burkina Faso. While we don't want to cite information from Wikipedia, as an encyclopedia, Wikipedia can actually be a really useful starting point for researching a topic because it helps us identify key terms that we can use for finding credible sites, books, and academic journal articles as we continue our research. For example, this article gives us the name of the type of wood that is typically used to carve mossy masks, the colors that are used on these masks, and the animals and archetypal characters represented. This is useful because we might want to narrow down our research later to search for a particular type of mask, such as mossy masks representing hyenas or antelopes. Now, if we go back to our results page, we'll also see that the top featured result is an essay from a website called Art and Life in Africa. If we click on this result, it will bring us to this page to evaluate. When we look at in, an information source, such as a website, we need to carefully evaluate it using ABCD, which is a set of questions to ask about different aspects of credibility. The A in ABCD stands for authority. When we evaluate authority, we need to ask ourselves who created and published the content on the website. We also need to ask, are they an expert on the topic? 
Here we see that this site was published by the University of Iowa. Their name is in the top left corner of the page. And if we look at the URL, we can see that it includes uiowa.edu. Having a URL that has a .edu domain lets us know that a university is the publisher of a website. However, universities often provide web space for students to publish class projects and essays, and students do not have the kind of expertise we are looking for when we want to cite sources in our academic research. This means that we also need to look at the author of this specific essay. We can see here that the author of this essay is Christopher D. Roy. If we Google Christopher D. Roy, University of Iowa, we'll find out information about the author. He was a professor and faculty fellow of African art history. And he had a PhD in African art history from Indiana University. This means that he has academic expertise that we often look for in a credible resource. The B in ABCD stands for bias, which prompts us to ask whether the author has motives other than to inform readers or make scholarly arguments about a topic supported by their expertise and evidence. Bias is not usually a problem on academic websites. However, the C in ABCD is currency. Currency is always something we want to closely investigate. Currency prompts us to ask, how up to date is this information? It's hard for us to establish just looking at this essay when it was written, but we do see that all the photographs in the essay were taken in 1985. This might prompt us to think, maybe there is some more recent information about masks from Burkina Faso for us to consult in addition to this essay, as artistic traditions in Africa are not frozen in time. If we go back to our results, we'll also find an article published in 2016 about the International Festival of Masks, or Festima, which takes place in Burkina Faso. This article is a good example of an updated source because it talks about a festival that only started in 1996 which emphasizes why the photographs taken in 1985 should perhaps not be our only visual source on this artistic tradition. An article from a news website like CNN is a great example of a popular source. The author of this article, Thomas Page, is not an art history professor, but is instead a professional journalist. He does not rely on his own expertise on the topic from original scholarly research but instead engages in interviewing, observation, and reporting on this topic to write articles of interest to the general public. Many results on this search are from other news sites like Al Jazeera, other academic sites, and museum websites. For example, the Metropolitan Museum of Art or the Smithsonian Institute. However, keep an eye out for pages like this one from FrenchNC.com. This is a good example of a commercial site that has a particular bias. Remember B in ABCD is for bias. This website is a gallery that sells masks so information on the site is to advertise this mask to potential buyers. It's also hard to tell from the about page who the authors of this information are and what expertise they have on masks from Burkina Faso specifically, since they just seem to own an antique store in Chatham, North Carolina. Additionally, if we think about the D in ABCD, which stands for documentation, there's no evidence provided about where they got this information on ceremonial masks from Burkina Faso. They have not documented their sources with any citations. 
this page does not have any editors or fact checkers who review the accuracy of the information. This is a poorly documented site for academic research standards. Therefore, it's not really a credible source of information on masks. Always pay attention to whether a site is trying to sell you African or other global artworks to collectors, as these sites are often biased into trying to persuade readers to buy artworks rather than to just inform readers about the artworks and artistic traditions. They rarely provide good documentation about where their information comes from. I hope this short lecture was helpful in getting you to think through researching global and non-Western art topics. And don't forget that you can always email me if you have questions about research. My email address is here on the Art History 112 online research guide. You can also use the library's Ask Us service to chat with the librarian. The chat is embedded here in the research guide and also available on the UNCG Libraries website by clicking on chat with the librarian in the top red box. This page also tells you the available hours for chatting with the librarian. So you know ahead of time when you can get instant help with your research. Thanks very much for watching and I hope to talk to you